Today we're looking at the PTFE hose and fitting kit offered by Evil Energy. My 1975 truck with the carbureted LS as well as my 1973 Dodge Charger with the carbureted turbo big block are both currently running using Evil Energy hoses. And now we're gonna be running the complete Evil Energy fuel system from the tank all the way to the carburetor or fuel injection system. I'm gonna move the hose off to the right real quick and let's look at what's inside the box. As I mentioned before, this is their 100 micron fuel filter kit by Evil Energy. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this box. Inside, we've got a 100 micron fuel filter as promised with their little logo on it. We also have a couple different fitting adapters and we have another sticker. Let's go ahead and open this bag of adapters and see what's inside. So inside the baggie we have a dash 10, dash 6, and dash 8 fuel fitting kits for the filter. The filter is set up to run dash 10 natively, but their kit actually comes with all three sizes so you can run dash 6, dash 8, or dash 10 fuel line to and from this post fuel filter. So I went ahead and pulled the dash eight out of the bag because that's where we're gonna be using. It also came with a set of O-rings that you're supposed to put on the fittings themselves before installing it onto the fuel filter. And the thread size for these fittings are ORB-10. It's actually the same thread size as AN-10, except the ORBs seal on an O-ring and the AN fittings seal on a taper. Now that we've got the O-rings on, these fittings should slip right into the fuel filter. And typically you're gonna wanna run like a little dab of oil or dielectric grease onto these O-rings so that way they seat properly up against this housing. If you ever need to replace these O-rings, these are pretty common. You can get them at a standard auto parts store or hydraulic shop near you. That's a big reason why I love the ORB fittings is because if you need to service them, it's real easy because they all use common parts. Now that we've got our fuel filter assembled, let's go ahead and take a look at that fuel line. I mentioned it before, but this is black nylon stainless steel braided PTFE hose. This hose style is supposed to work with PTFE compatible fittings only. It's not designed to be put together with push lock fittings or press together fittings that are designed for rubber hose. PTFE fittings are designed for PTF hose exclusively. A telltale sign that this is a PTFE system is that when you look inside the hose, you are going to see a white liner and that is a Teflon or PTFE liner. And the beauty of running PTFE hose is that PTFE hose is resistant to diesel, biodiesel, E85, race fuel, alcohol, and regular gasoline on top of that. So pretty much any fuel system they decide to run this hose on, your, this hose will be compatible and won't break down over time. Versus if you run rubber hose, the rubber hose will degrade over time depending on the alcohol content in the fuel. I've also used PTFE lines for transmission and oil coolers for the exact same reasons. Drawbacks of the PTFE line are the fact that it is not as flexible, and if you kink this line, you cannot unkink it. Once you put a kink in it, you might as well cut that piece off and start over because you cannot save it. So I went ahead and pulled two fittings out of the package. I have a straight fitting and a 45 degree fitting. The way you can tell that these are PTFE style fittings is that if you open these and take them apart, you're going to see a little aluminum collar on the inside. This is actually what locks the PTFE liner to the hose fitting. If you try to install this fitting without installing this collet, there's going to be no tension on the PTFE hose and the hose will blow out or start leaking immediately. So definitely don't forget to install this when you're putting these hoses together. The 45 degree angle hose is exactly the same thing. It'll have that collet in the middle that holds everything together right here. Both of these fittings have a chamfer toward the end of the fitting right here, and that just ensures that you're able to slide it into the PTV hose easier. Some fittings do not come with that chamfer, and assembling those becomes a lot harder than it should be. The 180 degree, 45 degree, and 90 degree fittings also have a swivel feature built in. As you guys can see from right here, there's an O-ring here. Once you're trying to install the system and you need a little bit of wiggle room, the system will actually swivel back and forth. So that way you're not twisting that PTFE hose and risking accidentally kinking it. Let me go ahead and break one of these ties so you guys can take a good look at this hose. Another drawback of braided hose in general, not just the PTFE hose, is that the braid is actually really sharp and it's really annoying and it will hurt you if you are not careful. In order to install this little collet, you're going to have to open up the braid a little bit. A lot of people like to use a pick. I will grab a pick or I'll grab a screwdriver. Really, it's whatever I have available. But once you open this up, you can clearly see 
how this hose is assembled. You guys can clearly see the Teflon liner right here. This is the white one right here. And then you guys can see the silver braid. This is a stainless braid. And that's actually what gives most of the strength of the PTFE hose. And then we've obviously got the nylon braid on the outside. And that protects the stainless braid from abrasion. The beauty of this hose is that it's very durable. This hose can ride right up against a bunch of stuff. And the inside hose is going to be perfectly fine. I've accidentally scraped up the nylon liner. Only to see that the stainless braid was still in perfect condition. And although the nylon is still susceptible to burning, it is still very resistant to heat. While you guys are already here, let me show you guys how easy it is to put this thing together. Right out of the box, these hoses come factory wrapped with the tape out on the end. This will protect the braid from fraying, but it's also used as an indicator to tell you where you're allowed to cut. Every time you need to make a cut, you're going to wrap one layer of painter's tape around here, and you're going to use that to make your mark. Once you make your mark, you can easily make the cut with bolt cutters, die grinders, carbon cutting wheels. I've even heard of people using cement cutting wheels in order to cut this hose. Because the painter's tape is holding everything together, you're not really worried about fraying. You just need to make sure that the cut that you make is 90 degrees perpendicular to the rest of the hose. If you cut the hose and it's not at a perfect 90 degrees or close to it, you run a high probability that your hose might leak. So you guys gotta be very careful of how you cut this hose. If you guys use bolt cutters or specialty cutters to cut this hose, the hose will end up crushing before it cuts. And that's what this little tool that they included is for. Once the hose is crushed you can go ahead and use this tool to force itself in here and open that channel back up when you're trying to assemble the fitting together if you cannot fit the fitting inside of the Teflon liner after the call it's on then you can run this afterward as well in order to get that fitting to line up properly with the hose I mentioned that you only need one layer of masking tape because if you use any more than that, then you're not going to be able to fit this collar over that. So once you have your layer of masking tape and you've made your perpendicular cut, you're going to go ahead and slip this collar on. You can go ahead and twist it into its place. And once the collar is all the way in, you can go ahead and pull the masking tape right off and begin opening up the braid. Just like I mentioned before, you can use a pick, you can use a screwdriver. The whole point is to make sure this braid is open, but just enough so that way you're able to seat that goes inside the PTFE fitting. The more you tug on this braid, the harder it will be to close it back together when it's time to assemble the fitting. Once you've spread open the braid, you can go ahead and slip this little collet on, take it up against your table and push it straight down. The way you're gonna know that it's perfectly seated is that the aluminum collet is going to be butted up right up against that Teflon liner. If you have a gap between the Teflon liner and the aluminum collet, the collet's not seated all the way in and you're going to need to use a little bit more force or clean up the fitting a little bit better so that way it can slide all the way in. Sometimes the braid is also in the way so you might have to open up that braid a little more to get it to seat properly. By looking at the inside I can see that the Teflon liner is not seated all the way in. So I'm going to go ahead and use that tool that we talked about earlier to line everything back up before I try to install the new fitting. Now that I've got everything lined up let's go ahead and assemble this thing. Pressing these two pieces together shouldn't be that difficult. A little bit of effort and a little bit of twisting should put everything together. Once you get to this part right here, the only thing you need to add is a little bit of oil or grease. I like to use red bearing grease and I'll dab it at the ends of this hose right here and I'll add a little bit on the threads as well. You have to remember that these fittings are aluminum and galling aluminum is actually fairly easy. So you gotta take as many precautions as you can in order to not destroy these fittings when you're trying to assemble them together. Dialectic grease is also an option and it'll probably be a little bit cleaner than using red grease. But I have a ton of red grease laying around because because I use it on a ton of stuff, so that's why it's my preferred method. But you guys can definitely use whatever you think is right for you. Now that we've added a little bit of lube to this, we can go ahead and pull this collar up. And as soon as you got the first thread, everything should thread together. Once you've threaded this in as far as you can, it's time to break out the hand tools. Now, normally, you're supposed to use a set of AN wrenches, which are made of aluminum that'll prevent galling on this fitting. You could also use steel wrenches that fit snugly up against this in combination with the vise, and you can get all that together as well. The last option is to use adjustable wrenches. Now, these are not a great idea. Evil Energy does make an aluminum adjustable wrench, which does help a lot in not damaging the hose ends. But if you're on a budget and you don't have anything else, just using a set of adjustable wrenches will work. They're not going to come out as pretty as you'd like them to be, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So we're going to secure these two parts right here, and then we're going to spin this collar right there. So let's go ahead and take our big adjustable and line this up right here. And then we're going to take our smaller adjustable. Now that we've got both wrenches on, all you have to do is start snugging it up. As you get closer and closer to fully seating this thing, 
it's gonna start to get harder and harder as you go down. So the chances of you damaging this fittings increase exponentially the tighter this thing gets. This is a dash eight, but a dash six and a dash four are definitely easier to assemble because you don't have to deal with as much resistance. We're dealing with higher volume fuel systems, so number eight and number 10 are, so number eight and number 10 hoses are basically used on the regular for us. Once you're all done tightening it up, you should have a finished product that kind of looks like this. This is basically the finish that you're gonna get if you use the wrong equipment. But when the installation is more important than the looks, most of us have to make do with what we got. Lucky that this is not going to be going into a show car. In another video, I'm going to be showing you all the other methods that you can use in order to assemble this PTFE hose. I'm going to leave a link to all this stuff in the description down below so you guys can check it out. Shout out to Evil Energy for sending me this stuff. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher, out.